All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're gonna to be going over a pretty important tutorial, and that is how to backup your Synology NAS using Hyper Backup. So Hyper Backup is an awesome application, and in my opinion, probably one of the best backup applications out there. And it's got so much under the hood that it can do, but it's really important to use. You need to be backing up your NAS. I'm not saying you have to back up every single file you put on your NAS, but you really need to go through and sit down and say, all of these files are crucial for me to have. These are the files that if I lost them, I would be in trouble and make sure to back up those. And in most cases, those are probably going to be the family photos and things like that that are probably under 300 gigs in space. And so it's really cheap. I'm not going to talk about too much of specific providers, but I'm going to talk about what to look for when you are choosing a backup. I would really recommend you use a off-site backup. This can be a safety deposit box where you have a hard drive that once a month you come in, plug it in your NAS, back the thing up, and put it back in the security deposit box if you're the type of person to remember to do that. It can be a NAS at a friend or family member's house that's got Hyper Backup Vault set up on there, or it could also be a cloud like Synology C2, Backblaze B2, or AWS S3. All are options. You can even back up to Google Drive. This video is mostly going to focus on how to back up and what kind of settings you've got for all of these different things. And so I'm actually just gonna be doing a local hard drive backup here, but the principles will be same for all of them and we'll talk about some important things to look out for. All right, so the first thing you need to go ahead and do is download Hyper Backup from the Synology. So we're just gonna go ahead and log into Synology DSM, open up the Package Center, and I'm doing this in DSM 7 as you can see, which is the new OS, so I think all my tutorials will now be in DSM 7. Go to install it. And I've got a ton of specific tutorials on how to back up to specific services, but this one's just going to cover all the settings and all the things you need to look for. All right, and so now it's installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. And so you can see we are met with a ton of options here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug in this hard drive and we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so before we go into all these settings, I'm just gonna go ahead and set up this drive. I've already shown how to back it up to a drive, but we'll, we'll go ahead and set it up right now. So when you are choosing a format to format it into, really you're gonna to wanna to choose XFAT because it's got the ability to be plugged into a Windows, Mac, or Linux machine. And so that way, should you need to step away from Synology, you'll have a backup easily, or you can choose a cloud provider as well. But in reality, this is not important to the specific video. All right, so now it is set up. So now we can go ahead and actually set up our backup. So we can go ahead and see that under file station, we can see we've got this USB share set up. So that is perfect. And so that's gonna be our destination. So let's go ahead and open up our hyper backup. And now we are left with a screen where we've got a ton of different options. And I really wanna talk through what different options you've got here and when should you choose certain things. And so first off, you'll notice that there's kind of two different types of backups for a lot of these things. So for example, rsync. There's rsync and rsync copy single version. There's the same thing, single version here. So what single version is, is think of a just copy. That's pretty much what it is. Basically all the files are sent from one folder to the other one and it is a mere images of the two. What this is good for is say you need to be able to go on a road immediately and grab all the files off of your NAS in a certain folder. This will do that. This will allow you to easily plug in the hard drive into your computer and use it just as if you were connected to your NAS because all the files will be on there exposed in the exact same way. Where this sucks is the fact that, say you delete a file or corrupt a file or somebody hacks in and goes through and cryptos all the files on that folder. This version is dumb. It's just gonna go through and say, all right, well, those are the new files. Let's go ahead and copy those over. And it will delete the old versions. And so it will not help you from that. I would not call this a true backup. It's really like RAID. It's nice to have, but it's not a backup. So that is what you've got there. And it also limits you from being able to do some of the cool things like backup your entire Synology configuration, backup applications and things like that. So we've got a bunch of options here and I kind of want to talk through what different things are. So the first one is the Synology backups. The first one is local folder in USB and we've got the single version of that as well. That is pretty much what we've got here that I'm doing. I would not recommend it though, unless you are doing the workflow where you're taking it to a safety deposit box once a month. Because local folder does not help you if your house burns down, if you get stolen or anything like that, it's really not that great of a backup because it's not resilient, it's not redundant, it's not different geolocations. 
So these two are a great place to start with a backup, but I really would not recommend them as your final backup solution. Now, if you wanna just have a second copy of all the extra files you don't need an offsite backup of, that's great. Then there is also remote NAS device. So this is great. This is where you can set up another Synology as a hyper backup fault. And that means you're able to back up one Synology to the other one. So this is a great workflow and I'm actually planning on setting this up is basically just go through, get a cheap NAS and set up at a friend or family member's house and set up as a hyper backup vault. Then the Synology will automatically push to it and it's really cheap. It's got high upfront costs, basically having to buy the NAS and the hard drives but from there, you don't have any recurring monthly fees, which is awesome, especially if you're talking over 16 terabytes, that can get incredibly expensive every single month. Instead, you can do it once. Another advantage of this is you can send it over the very first time over a local area network and then drive it to the other place, meaning you don't have to wait literally months in some cases for the first backup to complete. Then there's also Synology C2 storage, which I am a huge fan of and I personally recommend to everybody at this point who doesn't need to have an insanely large backup and just needs something that's gonna work. In my experience, it has been by far the best implemented. They actually have a pretty good price point. I think they're about a dollar more per month per terabyte than Backblaze, but they have a lot of options like you keep your files for an extra 30 days and they've got all these different options for you that really makes it worth it. I know I'm gonna sound like Synology fanboy, but in my experience, Synology C2 has by far the best implementation. To be fair, that's because they built it and they definitely threw some extra features in there, but it really is great. And if you don't have a ton of storage and you're choosing between this and Backblaze, I actually would recommend Synology C2 storage because it allows you to have disaster recovery because the Synology itself, even if it deletes the backup, you'll have it for an extra 30 days, which is huge. And so those are the Synology options. And then there's the file server options. These are generally other NAS devices. I actually have never used OpenStack Swift, but rsync is a great one. If you're ever setting up a Linux box or a free BSD, this is what I use if I need to back up to a true NAS or a free NAS build because it's so easy. Everything Unix related is going to have an rsync client and it makes it very easy to set up one as a backup. And once again, you can either choose to use the hyper backup method or the rsync copy method. The rsync copy method is good if you've got snapshots on the other end and want to be able to have the entire file system as is. Then WebDAV is pretty much over HTTP or HTTPS, which is a great encrypted version if you need to do it. Though in general, I would recommend setting up a VPN between the two servers and using an rsync because you're gonna get a lot better performance and that's really what rsync is designed for. And then you've also got a bunch of options down here for different cloud services most notably Google Drive. Though with Google Drive, you do need to make sure that you're not uploading too much in a given day because Google Drive will start to actually block you for a day. The rules for this are always changing, so I'm gonna go ahead and let you research that, but that's just one thing to look out for with Google Drive. And then there's also S3 storage. By default, this is AWS S3 storage, but if you're doing something like Backblaze, this can also work there. One thing I really would recommend is whichever service you're using, try to make sure that you can set up snapshots on that end as well. Because you don't want a situation where your NAS goes hostile, deletes its own backups because say the worst happens and somebody gets full admin access, you want to be able to make sure that there is a backup on the other end that your Synology cannot touch. And so the way I like to implement this is if you've got two different NASs, one offsite, set up snapshots on the offsite NAS then have them kept around for an extra 30 days. That means if your NAS does go hostile and deletes its own backups, you'll have 30 days to actually restore that entire hyper backup file, meaning you don't lose anything, which is a great setup. So if you are gonna be going to a cloud, look at the pricing. AWS S3 is good in a sense because you can have really long-term storage and archival stuff, but if you're not going crazy large terabytes and you're not having an insane workflow, I would really look at the Synology C2 cloud storage because in my experience, it's just been by far the easiest to set up and will cause the least amount of problems. Okay, so those are all the different options you've got. And now let's go through and set up a backup because there's a ton of options you've got. So we're gonna go ahead and select local folder in USB because we're going to a USB drive and we're not going to select single version. So here we've got the option to just relink to an existing task. 
Say I already had a backup going and now I need to reconnect to it. You can do that here and it works very well. And now we're going to choose where to go. So we're gonna send that to USB share one and directory. So this is where the backup's gonna be going and the directory is just going to be the name. Space Rex one is fine. We can also just call it whatever your NAS name backup. And that will be exposed on the file system. And now we'll go ahead and click next. And now we select which files we want to back up and which volumes, and you can get crazy with it here. So let's go ahead and just back up everything. But we also have the ability to drop down to every single one of the applications and choose, okay, every single subfolder. And furthermore, you can choose to include or exclude specific file formats. And so say you do not want to have any kind of PNG files. So you're gonna say star.png. And then I would also do um, lowercase as well. So this will say any PNG files, we're not gonna back up for whatever reason. You can use incredible file filtering here to really choose the exact files you do or do not want to back up. It is very powerful in that sense. And so there's just a lot you can do here and really tune it down to back up exactly what you need. I think most people probably don't wanna do this unless maybe you say, okay, you know what? I don't need to back up all my movie files, but I wanna back up all my pictures because I just don't wanna pay for the space. You could do that and say .movs and just say that each of those we're not going to back up and just select everything like that. You could also do something like a .raw file. If you've got raw files, you're like, Ugh, I don't need to back up the 12 terabytes of raw files that are interspersed in my photo library. You can do that here and there's so many options here. You can really tune it to exactly what you need. But I'm gonna go ahead and just cancel that. And you can select exactly which backups you like. And now you can go through and select which apps to back up. And this is really important if you wanna do the thing where you just use this to rebuild your entire Synology. So we're gonna select them all and it will automatically do it. So one thing to note, some applications that create their own shared folders actually will automatically say, okay, since you've enabled backup of this, you also need to backup the images as well. Though most of the time it's just backing up the configuration. So you may as well just select the entire thing because it's really not gonna be that big. But you can see that Synology Photos creates the homes folder so that everybody has their own home folder and the photos folder. So that means that both of those will automatically be backed up and enabled. And so now we've done that. And so now we can just go through and name it. We'll call it USB backup. You can say task notifications. That's like, hey, if it fails, I would just leave that on. Then you can also go through and have a detailed change log if you need to audit your NAS or something, exactly say, okay, this is when those files were deleted. For most people, that's really unnecessary and kind of overkill, but it is there if you need it. The other thing is, since this is a USB drive, you can say remove destination external device when backup has successfully completed. So that is the case where you've got it at the safety deposit box and you want to go through and once a month back it up and have it automatically eject it once it's done. Then compress backup data, I would generally enable because files tend to be very compressible and it's already in this proprietary .hbk format. So I would really recommend set, setting that up. Then you can also go through and enable the schedule. So this will say when to run it at, and by default, you only are allowed to do daily backups. So you can't do like hourly backups or anything like that. Now, if you have Synology C2 Cloud, this is another one of those kind of paywalled features that allows you to do hourly backups should you need to. But in general, this is for disaster recovery where your entire NAS gets fried or something like that. So in general, dailies are fine. Though if you need more than that, I would really look at doing a send with a BTRFS, so BTRFS replication, and you can do those every single five minutes. It's that fast. And so then you really should want to go through and always have an integrity check schedule. This is really simple. What this will do is it'll just check and make sure nothing too screwy has happened to the backup. It's not going to restore every single file or anything like that, but it will go through and kind of kick the tires and it's a great place to start. So if for whatever reason the backup gets super corrupted, it'll find. And so it'll probably find 95%, and I'm just spitballing here, of the issues you could have with hyper backup where something's crashing on the other end and files aren't getting sent correctly. It should hopefully find those, but you never know what happens. So an important thing to do is once a month, if you can, go through and just click on the backup and just download a file or two. That way you know what happens. And check data, 
you can choose how long to check the data for. And so if you want, you can do like 60 minutes. And so that way it's checking a lot of the data. This is basically how long it'll run the check data for. And then you can also enable client side encryption. So this is the option to encrypt the backup. So right now without client side encryption enabled, if somebody grabs that hard drive and takes it home with them and downloads the Synology software, they will have access to every single one of the files on the NAS, even if the shared folder itself is encrypted. And so that is one thing to know. So if this is just your backup of photos, maybe you don't encrypt it. Maybe you're like, you know what? If somebody wants to steal my photos, it's not that big of a deal. I'd rather make sure that I've got them and I never lose the password or anything like that. And so for me, a lot of my backups like that, I don't encrypt because I'd rather make sure I have them than make sure somebody else can't have them. Now, from a performance perspective, you're really probably not going to see too much of a difference. You're generally going to be network limited, unless of course you're plugged in over a hard drive, then you might see something, but generally it's not going to be a big performance hit to you. So I will enable that to show this. And so this is going to be the encryption key. We'll see it's actually also going to download the encryption key. So we'll have two different options for restoring this encryption. And so another really nice thing you can do with this encryption is it gives you the peace of mind to be able to throw it up on any kind of cloud. Because even if that cloud screws up and puts the entire folder public, well, it's not that big of a deal. It's encrypted. Nobody else can see that data. And so that is where I really like having the encryption is you just don't have to worry about it. And so now you're probably going to want to have a backup rotation. So by default, if you do not enable a backup rotation, every single file that's ever been on your NAS will also be in the backup, even if it was deleted five years ago. So a backup rotation pretty much keeps files for a certain amount of time and then goes through and deletes them. And so you've got a few options here. You can either do the earliest versions, so you keep the most recent 256 versions. And so we've got one version per day, so it'd be the past 256 days, about nine months. You can do a smart recycle where it automatically goes through and kind of does a tiered system. So it'll keep more versions of files from more recently, but it will also keep files for a long time. So you can see with 256 versions, we're getting files from four years ago. And so for most people who are not changing files constantly, which is most people's workflows in my experience, you probably don't want this because now you've got to have every single file you've ever had on your NAS for four years. So another great thing to do is a custom retention. And so just say, okay, from the past month, I want dailies. Or what you can also do is edit it. So say from the past, for the past three months, I want dailies. So one a day. And that's it. So then you will have a copy of your entire file system for the past three months from every single day. And that's a good place because generally you're not having that many changes to files. And Hyper Backup is very intelligent. It only stores deltas to files. That means it only stores the changes in files. So if through these three months a file doesn't change, well, there's no more copies of the data. The file size does not overall expand. And so now we need to go through and make sure that gets triggered. And so we are doing 90 days because that's three months. So we'll do the max number of versions kept. It's going to be 90. And so the way this works is it first goes through and it keeps all the versions until the versions exceed this number right here. Then it follows the custom retention rules to start deleting them. And so if we have this at 256, these custom retention policies would not be enacted really. Instead, what we want to do is you could say 10 or let's just say 90. And that's how many versions you've got. And it shows you a nice thing here of all the different versions we've got. And so let's go ahead and just click done. All right, and so now we'll see a, hey, do you want to allow downloads? And yes, the reason we want to allow downloads is because it just downloaded the key to our backup. The backup can be de-encrypted with two different methods. The key, which is a file, or the passcode, which is the password you've got. And that's nice because you can give your employees a copy of the key without having to give up your password. And it also allows you to file that stuff away without keeping copies of your passwords. And so now we're going to go ahead and say backup now and yes. And so now it's just going to go through and do a backup. All right, and so now it just went through into the first backup. It was very fast because it was one over a hard drive and two, it was all local and three, there's really not that much data on there. 
And so the other thing we can do is say we were about to do something and we're kind of worried that it'll break our NAS or something. You can also intermittently do a backup now, which will automatically go through and do a backup, but the backup will still be triggered every day at 3 a.m. by default, which is how we set it up. And so that, that's just an option you've got there. All right, and so now while that's running, we can go ahead and open up FileStation and let's check out that USB share. So it's this .hbk file. So we can actually just go ahead and double click on it since we're on our Synology and enter that password or encryption key. So we'll go ahead and enter the encryption key. And now we can see all the files we've got are on here. So we can go ahead and open up everything and see it all and be able to actually go through and just copy to, which will restore it to a specific folder or download it straight here all very easily and gives you so many options. So right here, boom, we've now got access to that folder we just downloaded. And so this allows you to go through. Now, if you had a lot more versions, you'd see them all right here in the timeline, which is really nice to be able to have and be able to do. And so that is how you would restore from backups and be able to view all of those files. You can also go through and see some statistics, yada, 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 how much stuff was um, grown, and even get some notifications of, hey, this is growing very quickly, and all the things like that. It's, in DSM-7, they've added a lot more to this, and it's made it a lot more usable for businesses specifically. The other thing I would really recommend once a month doing is opening up Hyper Backup and checking it out and just seeing if you can restore some files. So let's go through and say, okay, you know what? I'm a little bit worried. Who knows what happens? So go through every 30 days or so and go ahead and click on Backup Explorer. If it's encrypted, enter the passcode. And just go ahead and click on a couple of files and make sure that they're all there. Maybe even do a little bit of a comparison between what's on your NAS and what you expect and see just to make sure all the versions of files are there and that you can download them. Go ahead and click on one to download and just see what happens. And that, that way you can really help know, hey, yes, this worked or this did not work, and you'll catch things a lot sooner. I'm not saying it's that often. Personally, I've actually never seen a backup fail with Hyper Backup, but it's always important to check with that kind of stuff. The other thing is, should you have corrupted a file or something and you're like, oh, I, I need this new version of the file, you can actually just select it and restore it and it will overwrite the destination file, so whatever's in file station in that folder with the version that's in the backup. So you can go back in time and actually select the thing. And it's really cool in that sense. All right, and really that's all there is to it. Hyper Backup is a great application and it's got a lot of different options you can go ahead and do. I'm planning on doing a couple of videos on like, hey, what happens when you need to restore from Hyper Backup? Because it's not going to give you a perfect clone. It is not going to restore every single setting to the exact identical one, you are going to have to go through and search through your NAS and make sure everything's set up, but it will have all the major configuration and all the data will be backed up. All right, well, that's going to be it for this tutorial. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below, and have a good one. Bye.